The biomes of Ark Survival Evolved define the maps we explore, each separating them to their own flavour of invitation. Whether it be a particular resource or creature, every unique biome identifies with something you'll need in Ark. Whilst all are lovingly handcrafted marvels, it appears there are some you prefer more than others. So what is the best biome? You're right kids, it's Ras Clark and welcome to another top 10 as voted by you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share around and let's get into it. So in at number 10 is the Crystalline Swamps. Separating the bioluminescent and molten element regions, the clues certainly in the name, full of giant glimmering crystals, overlooking the watery depths to a hidden grotto. Being your journey to discover the reaper infested hazard zone, the swamps are full of aberrant arthros and titanoboa, with certainly many carcinos, sarcos and barries to boot. Boasted as expected a great source for crystal, gems and especially metal, overlooking the Drake Nest Dive. As mentioned, it's the biome required to venture through to, if looking for the Shadow's artifact, deep beneath its waters unveiling a hidden grotto. Certainly a great choice to build in too, with its quick access to the red zone, just be prepared to fend off many, many nameless. In at number 9, Volcano. A large volcanic hellscape, home to an active volcano and magma source. It is one of the hardest, second only to Luna, to survive in on Genesis Part 1, allowing access to a wealth of metal and more importantly element shards, as well as many lava looking X variants, it's certainly a resource rich biome. Because of volcanic eruptions and overall aggressive nature of dinos in the region, it is recommended to come here after the establishment of a base in Thames. Or if you are feeling daring, try and live here first. In at number 8, Apotheosis. Otherwise known as the Floating Islands, one of the greatest spots to build on with its vertical flat and hidden advantages, and incredibly high overlooking the entire map, and almost all connected by routes or land bridges. With plenty of metal and crystal nearby, notably Carcinos and Tapajara spawns, and hiding away a derelict aberrant castle surrounded by rock drake nests, which you can in fact reuse with spawned in rock drakes. It offers a secluded paradise to anyone available to fly. In at number 7, the White Shoals. The White Shoals is a great place to set up a base at least for PvE, as it isn't very dangerous and the worst possible threat are Dilos and the occasional Spino. There are several good base locations here, with abundant water sources and lots of metal nodes on the higher areas. Slightly hot with a chance of fog, it can make for a hard venture at times, along with lots of rain, but besides that is an amazing area to begin in. Of course, its unique feature is home to the many tropical crystal wyverns, awaiting to be passive tamed with simply crystal if chosen, as well as unicorns, with an extraordinary amount of salt should you rarely ever need it. In at number 6 is Canyon. Separating many of Ragnarok's biomes and almost very central to the map, the wondrous rises of the canyon offer many fantastic vertical lone island base locations, as well as a wealth of metal and easy access silica pearls. Towering above it all is the iconic crumbling bridge, providing the only real access should you wish to not brave the many many spinos lurking across its shallow waters. Home to my very first playthrough on Rack, it's hard to not recommend this as a great biome to live in if looking for aesthetics, safety and resources alone. In at number 5, Ocean. Arguably one of the more inviting biomes in this list, an expansive water biome that gives survivors increased swim speed and oxygen efficiency. Contrary to the biome teleport function, the ocean biome is extremely easy to survive in with its many non-hostile high-rising islands. Beneath the surface though are the many underwater sanctuaries or bubbles constructed filled with resources like gems and metal. Unfortunately most of the islands are quite tall so a blood stalker or an astrocetus would be necessary to reach the top to construct land bases if one so chooses, but should, offering great views and defensive opportunities. Overlooking of course it being the only home to X variant sea creatures and mega shallons, your source for shell fragments and you've got a biome certainly worth choosing to live in. 
In at number 4, the White Cliffs. Also known as the Chalk Hills, is a vast region that houses a diversity of creatures, including the map exclusive Denonicus. Overlooking the map, the region also contains many tall spots for building, and resource gathering is pretty rich, in particular metal, sand and cactus sap, as well as home to the destroyer artifact and an easy one at that. Overlooked of course is its home to the Chalk Golem, one of Valguero's rock elemental variants, and all contained within a quite simply attractive area with a glimmer of peace to those searching for it. In at number 3 is Highlands otherwise known as Scotland and resembling of a hilly plains to the east of Ragnarok, and certainly a great choice for at least starting out an arc, owed to many resources and creatures otherwise difficult to find elsewhere. Starting out, it's a great source for ovis for mutton, terrors for flying, and notably equus, easily tamed due to the wild crops offering savarut and rock carrot, and beached basilos nearby offering oil, spoiled meat, keratin and hide. Combined with a Giga Spawn, one of the more inviting caves around, and the ever looming lighthouse, and you've bagged yourself one of the most scenic and beginner friendly locations around. In at number two is Redwoods, the only multi used biome to make this list, and agreeable to see why. Moving up from the jungles we know to many thick, invulnerable tall trees, allowing certain creatures to climb them and players to build on them with tree platforms, offering some solace off the ground. Though full of threats including the terror bird, trudons and micro raptors, but especially thylers, are waiting poised on the sides of the large redwood trees and can wrangle a flying mount to the ground, pinning the player. Though most redwoods are known for their abundance of wood, metal and exclusively sap via mounting one with a tap, and especially beehives, the source for many uses, including ease of taming the many dire bears around with ease. Being so dense can certainly offer some shade should you need it, but equally expect it to be as dark as you'd expect with little light being let through. And before we get to number one, let's just have a quick special mention to the biomes that didn't just make the cut. And here it is in a number one, Bioluminescent. Interestingly housing number 10 on the list, but an overall depiction of Aberration's blue zone. It's a bright and mysterious region to explore, though very dangerous due to all the deadly creatures you can find out there. The region can be extremely hard to go and build in without dying just a little, and is highly recommended to go and bring a charge light creature with you to ward off the nameless, unless we forget the many spore clouds are waiting to drown you if not prepared, and eels are waiting in the waters. And yet, with all that death awaiting, there's a fascinating feeling to be exploring the aberrant shimmers bouncing off its great tree, extending out to many elevated base locations, all providing a quick route to the unlimited metal surrounding or other biomes with a stone's throw. If looking for beauty encapsulated by madness, perhaps one of Ark's appeals, there really isn't no better than to live in the bioluminescence. And there we go, that completes the top 10 list today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, comment below, let me know. What more top 10s would you like to see in future? My name's Ras Clark. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, ah, peace out.